Rizero Kara Hajimaru Isekai Seikatsu, a name that is too long and always just shortened to Rizero. Also known in English as Re, Life in a Different World from Zero. With a long and interesting title like that, is the anime at least any good? Now, a review of ReZero is bound to have some spoilers, and I will keep the number in this review to a minimum. I will discuss the characters and story from the first several episodes, but I will not give away any twists that pertain to the plot. I will spoil the first four episodes of ReZero, however, so you have been warned. Right, from the beginning. Natsuki Subaru is a 17-year-old boy who lives alone and spends his days playing video games and watching anime. On his way home from a convenience store, he gets transported into another world. Subaru thinks he has been sent to another world to fulfill an ancient prophecy or become a great hero. He is of course wrong and gets beaten and killed often. He does learn that he has a power he calls Return from Death, which allows him to come back from death to a previous point in time. Even so, his initial thought process is still wrong. Subaru, now in a world with humans and mages and monsters, with no friends and no money, wanders the newfound city alone. He does befriend a girl going by the name Satella and her familiar Puck. Satella has had her insignia stolen by a girl named Fel and is searching for the thief. To Satella's bewilderment, Subaru self-nominates to help look for the thief, claiming it is his one good deed for the day. After spending the day together searching the city, they find it is being sold at a loot house by a man named Rom. After entering the house, they find the occupants have been murdered. Subaru and Satella suffer the same fate shortly after. However, Subaru ends up resetting to a point in time before he died, standing in front of a fruit stand he visited earlier that day. Not knowing what's going on, Subaru rushes back to the loot house looking for answers. Upon arrival, he learns that no one is injured and that everything seems normal. Unfortunately, he ends up dying a second time, and the first episode ends with Subaru once again standing in front of the fruit stand. Subaru figures out that he can die and come back to life. With his newfound powers and the events that just unfolded, Subaru's life is about to change drastically. ReZero does a good job at creating atmosphere. The first episode is about an hour long and takes its time introducing the city of Lugnica to the audience through the eyes of Subaru. It also builds the relationship between Subaru and Satella. When Subaru dies and comes back to life the first two times, he can't believe what has happened. But after suffering a third fatality, he starts to realize he can return from death. At first, Subaru decides not to get involved anymore with the event, not wanting to suffer any more pain, nor does he want to die again. His good morality takes over though, and he realizes he can't just let innocent people die. Subaru decides to do his best at saving Satella as well as Felt and Rom. Subaru's determination to stop Esla, the woman who killed all four of them, really shines through. He chooses to push through his fears and do what is right simply because it is right. Subaru knows he can't let good people die, because even if they do not know him, he knows them. This is the first time Subaru's heroics are displayed, and it surely won't be the last. Now the first few episodes should set the stage for what kind of main character Subaru will be, allowing the audience to get to know his personality. Subaru does have qualities that make him stand out from other protagonists from other animes. For one, he uses logical deduction to solve his problems. Oftentimes, Subaru does not have the answers handed to him, but instead has to go searching for clues. One of the best things Subaru does is after he dies, he carries along the information from his previous life to use to his advantage in the next. Using this information, he retraces his steps up to a certain point and starts his detective work, taking full advantage of his return from death ability. The points where he resets to are also carefully placed, not too far back that the amount of ground he needs to recover is too overwhelming, but not too short that there is no flexibility. Subaru also demonstrates his intelligence in the first few episodes by trying different avenues when a previous one fails. In one life, he runs straight to the loot house trying to buy the insignia before the assassin gets there, but fails. In another, he tries to seek out Felt first and reason with her, moving her away from the danger area. He doesn't leave out any possibility and picks up on even the smallest of nuances. He is constantly thinking and working through the problem at hand. Even after experiencing death, his courage to continue on is admirable. He does express emotions of anxiety and confusion, but also endurance and fearlessness as he pushes himself to succeed. 
Another plus about Subaru is that he is a relatable character, minus the ability to come back from the dead of course. He is only 17, so he has many insecurities, but realizes that if he doesn't work towards bettering himself, nothing will change. He says stupid things and acts out, but that just makes him seem more realistic. He tries to voice his opinions while still being respectful at the same time. This does not always work out, and sometimes he makes the situation worse, but he is just trying to do what he thinks is best. Now for how good Subaru is, he is evenly as bad. Even though I say he takes advantage of his return by death ability, he also does not do this. It seems after Subaru clears an event, he forgets that deductive reasoning is a concept he used and goes into the next event without doing much forethought. Not only that, but he is very reckless when approaching the problems. He says he does not want to keep dying, even with his ability, yet he doesn't try to make things better. It is a wonder how a character can, at times, be so smart and so cunning, then at others, so stupid and short-sighted. Furthermore, he talks about wanting to get stronger and learn more, but he doesn't make an effort to actually try. He thinks that so long as he can clear whatever is in front of him, he can do anything. The main problem with Subaru is that he is too reactionary. I get that he can't just go around beating up anyone he thinks is dangerous, but why not learn about the world more so that he can be more prepared for the future? I guess as long as Subaru's inconsistencies keep working with the plot, the anime can keep selling itself. Besides Subaru, our main cone of colorful characters we usually hang out with are Amelia, Rim, Ram, Beatrice, and Roswell. From order of least to most interesting, we have Ram coming in last place. Ram's personality is her being perfect at everything, except when she's not. She speaks in a very monotonous tone, except when she gets angry. She is a powerful fighter, except when she fights. She is a maid at the Roswell's mansion, and that is about everything when it comes to her interesting personality. Even though Roswell gets the least amount of screen time, he is far more interesting than Ram. Mainly because Ram's character is very boring. Roswell has a lively personality and always seems like he has something going on. The mysterious nature around his character makes him much more interesting than Bland. He also reminds me of Mephesta from Blue Exorcist, not as good though. Next up is Beatrice, our resident lolly. She is in charge of the library and reads books all day. She also isn't fond of human interaction and is considered a powerful magician. She sort of reminds me of another character from another work, another powerful magician who is in charge of a library and reads books all day and doesn't go out much. Why do people wear these kinds of dresses? Rim is second, clearly not best girl. She is the younger twin sister of Ram and is also a maid at the Roswell mansion. Rim is a strong fighter, loves Subaru, not as perfect as her sister, but still tries. Uh, she loves Subaru. Um, she loves her sister as well, and Subaru, who she loves. Did I mention she loves Subaru? Because I feel that's important. She only comes in second because most of her competitors are really bad to begin with. Amelia is first. Who is Amelia? Well, that's the teller's real name, of course. Why did she hide it from Subaru? Because shut up and don't think about it too much. Amelia is in the running as the next ruler of Lugnica and is the main love interest of Subaru. Amelia is cheerful, energetic, caring, and steadfast. She is not afraid to speak her mind or step into the fire to battle the flames. She is a growing character, and for as much as we know about her, there is still much more left to discover. The best thing about Amelia is how she is always active. She takes every opportunity to better herself, wanting to become a person worthy of the title, Queen. She is smart enough to know when she is overstepping her boundaries, and also takes the time to make sure that others are being taken care of. The main problem with Amelia is her lack of basic knowledge. She is starting to become a queen, yet she doesn't know what a date is. She doesn't want attention drawn to her, yet she tells Subaru in the first episode to call her Satella, also known as the Jealous Witch, also known as one of the most hated beings in history. Whether or not Subaru knew what the name Satella meant, what would happen if they were in a busy area and Subaru called out the name Satella trying to get Amelia's attention? And if Subaru did know what the name Satella meant, then wouldn't that have caused more problems for Amelia? Why not call yourself something like Mary? It's a simple and easy name to remember. For someone who doesn't want attention drawn to her, she sure likes to take big risks. Now ReZero does have a nasty inconsistency habit. During Subaru's first event and first life, he and Amelia help a lost child, who happens to be the daughter of the fruit stand guy. Subaru meets the fruit stand guy before he meets Amelia. But during Subaru's third life, he faints in front of the fruit stand guy, and the guy helps Subaru, saying he is returning the favor for Subaru helping find his daughter. This isn't possible though, as Subaru only helps the fruit stand guy's daughter only in life 1, and only after he met Amelia. But during this time in Life 3, he hasn't met Amelia yet, nor has he met the fruit stand guy's daughter. 
How in Life 4, when he meets Puck and Amelia for the first time, he talks to Puck so naturally and even gives away some of Puck's secrets no one else but Amelia knows about. Did Amelia and Puck not find it odd that Subaru knew this kind of information? How in Life 4, Amelia arrives to the loot house during the evening before the murderer shows up. Even though in Life 1, it took her until night to find the building, and in Life 2 and 3, she never showed up in the first place. While the show does become better at fixing its inconsistency problem, the fact remains that this was a problem that never should have existed in the first place. Moving on to music, Rizio does a good job at setting the right mood for whatever the occasion. The one track that really stands out above the rest though is Call of the Witch. It first shows up during one of Subaru's deaths and is bone chilling, definitely the best track from the OST. However, the best song in Rizio is definitely its first opening redo by Konomi Suzuki. The first shot is of Subaru on the ground, slowly rising up from the dead. The opening does a good job at highlighting Subaru's return from death ability. Having Subaru be so close to happiness yet losing it multiple times. Letting Subaru take over for Subaru. Finally, seeming like he reached happiness after wandering through the dark only to be dragged back right to the beginning. It also has the main supporting characters recur multiple times throughout the opening. They flash and fade in and out, possibly referring to how they are in Subaru's memories. The opening does a good job at beating us over the head with symbolic images. Is ReZero an anime worth watching? Well, the allure of ReZero comes down to two major factors. The character of Subaru, as well as the story. Don't get me wrong, there are slip-ups. However, most of the show is an enjoyable ride. Subaru's idea of trying to bend the world to what he thinks it is, to what it actually is, really mirrors how people view the world. While the anime does include common tropes, it does try to tell a serious genuine story at the same time. Having the audience experience what life would be like being dropped into a new world with nothing special about you. That in reality, you are really just one person in a vast sea of many, and while what you do may seem insignificant, it actually has a bigger impact than you think. Not because the world is yours, but because every small piece builds to the greater picture. The best way for me to describe ReZero is that it is the best okay show. If you are looking for something groundbreaking or unique, you won't necessarily find it here, but you will at least be entertained. I recommend watching ReZero at least once. Just one viewing is enough to get the full experience, no need to keep going back to the beginning.